She is so oblivious. Absolutely not. Uh, I can't read this. Are you kidding me? I'm gonna guess that this is out of the perspective of the sniffing man. <gasps> Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel! If you're new here, my name is Medita and I like to consider myself a very, very picky reader that has very much issues giving books five stars because a five star has to be picture perfect and nothing can be wrong in it. So I give very little books five stars. So today I thought I could make this video that is called Reading Until You Find a Five Star Book. Um, so what I did is I picked out five books from authors that I'm already very comfortable with. And I really am hoping that one of these is going to be a five star. If not, I'm gonna have to pick out even more books. The first book we have here is She Gets the Girl by Rachel Lippincott. Since I've already given two of these books five stars, I thought why not read She Gets the Girl? This book has potential of being my next five star read. The next book I picked is The Naturals by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. Jennifer Lynn Barnes also wrote the Inheritance Game series. And if you don't know this, I absolutely love book one and two of the Inheritance Game series. So I feel like this could be another very lovely experience and I'm hoping it'll be a five star. Then I picked out another book, but it is The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. I really still don't know how to pronounce his last name, but he wrote Coraline. And yeah, I'm super excited. I really hope that this will be a five star read. And then the next book I have here is This Savage Song by V. Schwab. And I've read, I think, three or four books by her. You know, I feel like this book already has such positive energy and such positive memories from me seeing V. Schwab that it will be a five star. And then last but not least, I have a book by Olivia Blake. And that is one for my enemy. I have read five books by Olivia Blake and two of them were five stars. Uh, the fairy tale retellings, I really like those. And now let's figure out with which book I will start. I don't know. You know what? Let's just go with The Naturals because I've been eyeing this book for so long. So why not? So The Naturals is about a group of teenagers that get recruited by the FBI to work on cold cases, which is just so criminal minds and so cool. And the main character of this series is called Cassie and she is a profiler just like the Criminal Minds characters. And I'm very excited for it. I love Criminal Minds. I love you know, thrillers and mystery books, hoping it's gonna be a five star. But then again, if it is a five star, this video will end right away, which would be funny though. Anyways, let's go read it. Crackety dackety. Let's pray to the book gods that this is a five star. What in the world had I done to attract the attention of the FBI? You are an icon. Is she an empath? Is she Aaron Warner? Cause it feels like it. What are these you chapters? They, they're so scary. Is this a stalker? What is, what is this? Oh. I am this much terrified. Ugh. Who is this creepy you person? Who is you? Who are you? You. Michael is an empath. Michael's a natural reading emotions. Yeah. Empath energy right here. Ugh. Who is you? Who are you? Leah is a human lie detector. That's such a cool ability. Imagine being able to tell whenever someone lies. I want that. <gasps> Why are they all so funny? What's up with them? Maybe they're the naturals at being just like hilarious. Oh! Oh, I think I just found out something. I think I am correct? Oh my gosh. Why is it so dark? Oh no, wait, this is scary. Okay, everyone, I'm already on page 99. So much is happening, but also like nothing is happening at the same time. As in like, we haven't been exposed to really any bad things. There was only just one small one just right now. But Dean is very mysterious and I want to know about his past. Same as Michael. Why are both of them so mysterious and dark and scary? Leah and Sloan are just super cool. I love them so much. I hope we get a lot of like girlfriend scenes. You know what I mean? I'm thinking that the intensity will be turned up a lot now, or at least I hope so. So let's continue. <gasps> first case, I think this is the first case. Oh my gosh, I'm excited. <gasps> okay, very interesting already. I'm invested. Ooh, I don't think I could do this. Like even if I had these special abilities, I would decline the offer because what they have to like look at right now would cause me to have nightmares for the next 70 years. And therapy would not help. Is that the signature? I was correct. Ugh. Are you, whoa, this is like scary. I don't like this. Oh yeah. Not anymore. There are so many secrets already. You is back. 
I don't like you. Oh my god, what are your secrets, Leah? You are so mysterious and I love it. What? <laughs> the boldness is on another level. It's out of this world. I can't handle this. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, oh my gosh. I. <gasps> Shut up. Not at first. You're scaring me. <gasps> Case time. We're about to investigate. I am ready. Let's unlock my inner Nancy Drew and Sherlock Holmes. We're ready. Ah, okay, maybe I'm not ready. What? What? I knew this. I'm a profiler. I'm a profiler. I'm a natural. I know this. Never mind. I'm so wrong, but I go I was on the right way, but this is like even better now. Ah. Ah. No. Oh, we're about to reach part 3. I just have one more thing to go through. <gasps> ah! What? Oh. Oh. Oh no. Oh no. What the heck? Run, Cassie. A move to the other side of the planet. No, move to Mars. Um, I just reached part three called Hunting. But what I can tell you is that I'm scared for Cassie and her life. This book is very interesting so far. We know every character. We know their personalities. We know a lot of secrets already and a lot of backstories of a lot of these characters. I still wonder if we're going to get a little bit more on some of the other characters. Because I feel like Sloane could still have a bit more of a background, same as Leah. I do love, however, how they're starting to become a team because I feel like in the beginning everyone was not very nice. But I feel like we're getting better now. We're starting to form a little bit of um, a bond. I do wonder now what's going to happen because my theory so far has been pretty correct. I know, guys. I know. I'm smart. So yeah, I'll make lunch really quickly and then we'll read the last 100 pages of this book. I'm back everyone and I'm sweating like a raccoon. I don't know if that's an actual saying or not, but I just made it a saying. I have read this. I am so stupid, it's not even funny anymore. I accidentally put the book down on the wrong page and I just read an entire page wondering why it sounded so familiar. <gasps> oh no, I know what this is. No. No, Jennifer, you didn't get me here. I stopped reading before. Now I'm like a little bit more prepared, but not really. I know it's gonna be detailed. I know I'm gonna be disgusted. I know I'll, I'm gonna want to hurl into someone's face. Ugh. Something bad's happening and I'm not ready for it. <gasps> ah! Why are adults so dumb? I've said this before and I'll say it again. Listen to kids. They're not as stupid as you think they are, especially on these. The ones you recorded because they're so perfect and smart and like better than everyone. Theory. What if the killer is... You never know. I was so wrong. What? Never mind. I'm yet... You... Huh? I moved you a little closer because I feel like we're about to get a lot of, you know, jump scares and plot twists. So I thought you should be a little bit closer to the action. Yeah, I smell Romans coming my way. What is this supposed to mean? What type of riddle? We're about to experience lots of danger. There's a giant D in front of me and a warning symbol that says you should not go there, but we're going there anyways. <laughs> what? I, I don't have words, I'm speechless. No, no! What? Wait, 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 let me reread that. No, that can't be it. This is just to throw me off. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. <gasps> don't, 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 mm -mm, mm -mm. Guys, this is, I'm, I'm like so anxious. My heart is beating so fast. <gasps> Never mind. Wait, what? <laughs> so much is happening on one page. I, I knew it, guys. I knew it. Oh, I hate you so much. Why would you say that? You're an awful person. Wait, wait. I am so confused. Oh no. Oh no. I'm gonna cry. Why am I so emotional always? Oh no. This is so sad. This is not good. Oh my
my god, guys, we just re reached part five. <gasps> yeah! Bonding! Yay! I just finished this book. I think I'm gonna give this book four stars. It was a lot of fun to read. I was very hooked from the beginning. I didn't want to put the book down. I read this so fast. So it's a very high intensity, fast paced read with basically no time to recover after a traumatic event, which is fun. I liked it. I was like gasping every second. I was like, le gasp. I also liked the fact that we have these you chapters, which is like out of a different perspective and you don't know who it is but it adds a little bit of mystery to it. As I already said, the biggest thing that's missing in the story is definitely character development of the side characters or like the other team members. Cause I feel like I know this book's out of Cassie's perspective and she's still the main main character, but this is about a team of people, of five people. So I feel like each of them should have had more of a detailed personality because they were so important for the story. But yeah, I like the Criminal Minds inspo. I like that it feels like Criminal Minds, which I feel like to some people could be a bit annoying that it is so much like Criminal Minds, but I like it. This definitely feels like a 45 minutes Criminal Minds episode. I'm very happy that I started off with a good book like this. And yeah, let's pick up my second book to read and see if we start tonight or if we start tomorrow. Hey friends, good morning. It's the next day and I'm so excited to read book two. She gets the girl. I mean, I already explained yesterday what this book is about. So let's freaking go. If you cannot tell, I'm reading She Gets the Girl. I'm sorry, I actually did not explain this. I don't know what happened, so I'm gonna explain it now. This book is about Alex and Molly, who are opposites in every single way that you can think of. On one hand, we have Alex, who's this very headstrong and flirty character who can get any girl she could ever want, but sadly, she cannot keep any of them. And then there's Molly, who absolutely sucks at flirting, and she has been in love with the same girl for years now and has never talked to her. So then when Alex and Molly finally meet, they both decide that they can help each other to get their dream girl. Get it into the book title. But maybe, just maybe, the forced proximity caused something else. Maybe they will fall in love with each other. We don't now. So let's read this book. <sighs> Molly just said something that I feel deep in my heart. Molly is very capable of making every single situation awkward and I kind of love it. It's kind of funny. You know what I mean? Oh, I feel so bad for Molly. Maybe because I relate, but like that's so sad. Okay, everyone. I just reached chapter 9. I'm on page 99. It's going pretty fine, I would like to say. I really liked Molly in the beginning. She's like this like very shy girl who has issues talking with people, which I relate to a lot. But then there's like Alex and you know, I, I was okay with her in the beginning and I get where her issues are from with relationships and why she is scared to say I love you and why she runs away. But Alex reminds me of like those friends who enjoy making you feel embarrassed, but I'm hoping she'll have a lot of character development. And then overall, the story so far is pretty okay, pretty interesting, I would like to say. The writing is nice, like always, and we got a lot of information on Molly, not so much on Alex, so I'm hoping we'll find out a bit more about her. So I think everything else is gonna start now, and I'm very, I'm very excited, actually, so let's continue reading. You know how I literally just said that I wish we had more information on Alex and her character? Yeah, I should have waited a chapter to do my update because this chapter, the, right the next one, is fully dumping more backstory of Alex and I feel so sorry for her. I need to be able to flirt like Alex. Like, I'm writing these tips down. Why are they so good? Oh no, Molly! That's... <laughs> Molly, no! That is so bad. I would give up and never speak to anyone ever again and never leave this room. There's no way. She is so oblivious. This is me and this is Molly. You go. <laughs> I love when things go wrong in books. Like not with the romance, but like other things. It's really funny to me. I love a little bit of chaos. You know what I mean? Okay, guys, I just reached page 202. We're on chapter 19, aka Alex Perspective. The book has gotten a lot more interesting, in my opinion. During the last 100 pages, Molly has gone through some character development, which I really like. And we got a lot of funny scenes. I love the awkwardness. I love the trying and failing and then trying again and then winning. I am, however, a bit worried about how the two of them are going to fall in love because it says on the back, obviously, it's a hate to love romance. So we know they're going to end up together. I don't know. Yeah. Let's continue reading. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. We are about to read the cutest scene ever. I'm so excited. Can you see me well? I hope so. I'm the main attraction in this video. Ah! Oh my God, this is so cute. Oh no, why was the scene ruined with something like this? No. 
was just robbed of happiness are you kidding me ah! why okay tell me why <sighs> it's fine it's normal i don't want this to be there though i have 50 pages left and then i'm done and then i'll give you all my final rating why will you say that oh my gosh oh my god i hate that so much oh my god that just made me so <sighs> You actually suck. No! Why would you? Why are you? What are you doing? <gasps> oh no. Oh, this is so good. Oh, I, I was waiting for this. I was waiting for this. And it's so sad though at the same time. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. Oh my God, that makes me so happy. That was such a cute scene as well. Okay, you know what? You could have done this a bit nicer, actually. Whoa. Why are we jumping so fast? Uh-uh. I think I just reached the last chapter. Whoa. Oh, I love how the book ends. Oh my god, holy moly. I really destroyed this book. I just finished She Gets the Girl by Rachel Lippincott. And I think I'm going to give this book 3.5 to 4 stars. So I actually overall really like the premise of the story. I like the plot a lot, but I do feel like we are missing Alex's backstory. I think we need a bit more, not on her family past, but on her dating past, because in the back it says here that she's a flirt. Like, I feel like that wasn't really involved in the story a lot. And the other reason why this book isn't a five star is because this book has two different paces. Yeah, up to page 300, this book is very slow. We have lots of filler scenes. I actually really liked it. We have a lot of focus on the friendship between Alex and Molly but then the last 50 pages felt really rushed because we went from 0 to 100 in as I just said 50 pages which was a bit quick and the last reason why this book isn't more than a four stars or like a 3.5 stars is because I wish we had more scenes with a focus on the switching of emotions aka from friendship feelings to romantic feelings because we had a few scenes but I still think we needed a couple more scenes just to, uh, I don't know, make these romantic feelings seem more real and more built up. But yeah, overall, it's still a good book. If you like books like Better Than The Movies, I think you will really like this because in Better Than The Movies, we obviously also have this plotline where Wes wants to help Liz to get with her crush. It's a very easy, lightweight, fun YA read that you can read, yeah, basically in an entire afternoon. Let's now figure out what book I want to read next. My third book, I really don't know. Let me let me get them really quickly. Now, do we do one for my enemy or this savage song? The night Kate Harker decided to burn down the school chapel, she wasn't angry or drunk. She was desperate. Okay, we're reading this. My third read of this reading vlog is going to be This Savage Song by V. Schwab. Yeah, this book is about August and Kate who live in this world where there's a lot of monsters and the city is not safe. August Flynn apparently is a monster because he wants to be human and Kate Harker wants to be ruthless. So they're enemies. Oh my god, is this enemies to lovers? But like in a fantasy book, I'm so excited. Oh <gasps> Yes, it says here, but how do you decide to be a hero or a villain when it's hard to tell which is which? Oh my god. Okay, I'm super excited to read this savage song next. So yeah, this is book three and see you whenever I will start this. Welcome to day three, everyone. I'm scared, intimidated, and excited at the same time. I'm just feeling every single emotion that exists. So let's literally just get started. I love Kate. She is such a rebel character. Oh, okay. A lot of things are being cleared up now. We're already at verse one. Oh, I'm so dumb. Verse one, duh. He plays music. Are kids haunted in this book? Because why do they sound so scary? We just met one child and the child reminded me of like the kids in horror movies who like talk with ghosts. What's happening? Oh, raging daddy issues. I love it. I love daddy issues in books. <gasps> Shut up right now and stop talking. I love Kate so much. I support women's rights and women's wrongs. As in, I support Kate. Rotten to the core. Descendants, rotten to the core, core, rotten to the core. An absolute banger, that song. See... I don't have any trust for any of these people. I am suspicious of every single character. 
the daddy issues are elevating with every chapter. They were daddy issues, now they're raging. I'm extremely terrified of what will happen in this book. Ew, 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 ew. Okay, I just reached page 104. It's pretty interesting so far, I'm not even gonna lie. We have had mostly world building and we got introduced to both Kate's as well as August's issues or like things that they want to change in their life. So I hope they both rise to their full potential throughout this book and I don't know, overcome these fears. I am, however, very interested in these monsters because, like, Ogs is a monster, but there's also different monsters. And apparently they all do different things for different people. So I don't know how that will turn out. It's a pretty solid fantasy read so far, so let's continue reading. Ah, weird. We just reached verse 2, Monster C, Monster Do. Monster C, Monster Do. Oh, maybe it's a song. Monster C, Monster Do. That sounds pretty good, right? I'm scared of everyone. I feel like Kate's about to find out something and I don't want her to. She's in her detective era. I don't like that she's in her detective era. <gasps> oh. Uh. <gasps> why? None of this is normal. I don't know what's happening and why you say this is okay. It, it really isn't. Whoa, Kate, what are you doing? Let's rethink this for a sec, please. No, no. Stop it. Okay, guys, I reached page 212. I have mixed opinions about this book because on one hand, I actually really like the story and the idea of the monsters, her trying to prove herself to her dad, him not wanting to accept who he really is. But then on the other hand, I feel like nothing has happened in 200 pages. We've gotten world building. Nothing with a lot of tension has happened yet. Like, this is still a very low vibration book, if you know what I mean. Everyone is just sad and depressed in this book, and I want them to be happy. I want there to be butterflies. I'm not that invested, it's like a 3.5, but I'll continue, maybe it'll get better. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, guys, let's calm down. It's okay, it's just a book. Nothing ha Nothing's gonna happen to her, she's the main character. Right? Mm. Oh, God. This is not good. I'm not ready for this. I don't think I am. Is- what? <sighs> that was the worst joke I've ever heard in my entire life, but it's like still so funny because it's such a dad joke. What? 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 Huh? I'm so confused. Is this a dream? This is- there's no way this is real. There's no way this is real. Okay, everyone, I just reached page 302. Remember how I said that the last 100 pages were really boring? Yeah, not these 100 pages. These 100 pages were filled with action and scariness and me being terrified for my life and me being terrified for the characters and me having anxiety and panic on every single page. Why do I feel like the plot is going to be very hurtful with death scenes? I don't want that to happen, okay? I don't need that. I don't need sadness in my life right now. I need a happily ever after. So yeah, let's read the last 100 pages and see how this book ends. I'm still scared, so that's just great. I don't understand anything anymore. Huh? Maybe this book is taking a turn into a direction I never even thought was possible. Wait, wait, what? Oh no, I'm so scared. Who is this? No, no, no. No, please don't let it be who I think it is. Dear V. Schwab, do you want me to suffer? I don't think you do, so don't do this. Shut, Shut up right now. There's no way, there's no way. I don't know how to go on with my life. My brain cannot handle everything that's being thrown at me right now. <gasps> oh no, I'm gonna cry. Oh no, I'm gonna cry, I'm gonna cry, I'm gonna cry. No. No. No! Absolutely not. Uh, I can't read this. Are you kidding me? I am not strong. This is not gonna go well. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. At least something good is coming from this. Oh my god, no. I hate everything so much right now. What is going on? Oh, okay, we're gonna get another secret reveal. I'm totally mentally ready for that and not extremely unwell. What? wait, I don't understand this ending. <laughs> oh, that's so sad. Wait, what? Wait, stop crying. What? This is the end? No, 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 no. I am lost. I don't even own book two. How am I supposed to survive? The Savage Song was actually a pretty, it was a pretty good book. I would like to say, I think I'm gonna give it 3.5 stars. 
or 3.25 star or something like that just because it's very slow because the beginning was good we had some world building i just feel like it's very vague i feel like we only found out the tip of the entire icebook and there's so much information that we still need which i wish we had in this book and i don't know if it's gonna be in the second book so that was a bit disappointing and then the middle i feel like it could have been chopped down by 50 pages but i did however really enjoy the last 100 pages i mean the ending was extremely emotional in my opinion which was really great and definitely elevated this book Moral of the story is, the story was good, the plotline was good, I just wish we had less of the filler in the middle and more focus on the bonds and relationships between characters. So yeah, since this isn't a five star, I have to read another book. Yay! So I think I'm going to be reading next The Grey Bird Book. So this book is about an orphan whose name is Bod, but everybody calls him Nobody. And he actually lives on a graveyard and the only people that he talks with are like spirits and dead people. But one day he actually leaves the graveyard and goes beyond the secured walls and he discovers the new world, which is apparently equally terrifying but interesting because he meets an all too human monster and his name is Jack, and Jack apparently killed Bod's family. What? So yeah, I'll see you whenever I start reading this book. It's currently 9.30, almost 10 p.m. in the evening, and I have not read all day. The man Jack. Well, he's very scary. And why can he smell all these things? You're a weirdo. The man Jack sniffed the air. Can you stop doing that? Can you stop smelling everything? Like, is he Edward Cullen? Because he can smell everything too. Ugh. The man Jack is getting weirder and weirder. He blinked and sniffed the air. Stop doing that! And he also says hello with a U. H-U-L-L-O. Hello. Ugh. What is this? What is that? What are you? Name the different kinds of people. Alive people and dead people. Miss Lopesco, you're not helping me. Give me answers. Don't be so mysterious. I need to know what's happening. Well, they're scary. Ew. Night gaunts are hairless creatures that fly low and fast. Mmm. No, I don't I don't want to imagine that in my head. One way or another. You'll become one of us. The other way is messy urine was being digested. What are you whoa digested? What? Okay, I just reached chapter four. Four. So far, I actually really like it. It's very interesting. It took me a while to get into the writing style because it's just very, very different than anything I've read in the past like year, I would like to say. This is definitely like a four star right now. I really like it. It's very interesting. I love how we see nobody, aka Bod, grow up throughout the story, but in such a weird way because he obviously lives on a graveyard and he just communicates with ghosts and they're all old. They're all dead. And like, even though it's so confusing and so weird, I feel like I'm very hooked because I just want to understand what, what's happening to Bod right now because I don't get it. So I think I'm going to stop here for tonight and then finish it tomorrow. And yeah, then we'll see what we do afterwards. Hey everyone. Howdy do, young master Bob. I love the language, really the way these people talk. <gasps> what is he doing? No, 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 no. Leave him alone. Wife is actually like very intense. I'm gonna guess that this is out of the perspective of the sniffing man. Ah! He's here! Ah! Oh my god, the biggest nightmare out there! Why would you want to send him there? I just got back from therapy, so let's read. <gasps> that was rude. I just reached page 196, I'm in chapter 7, which is called Everyman Jack, aka the sniffing man is back. And he's about to sniff some air again. <gasps> Wait, oh, oh my god, is she back? <gasps> no, no! Why are we there? Why are we here? This is not a good spot, guys. This is not where we're supposed to be. No, why is the book getting sad now? book oh this is the last page oh no oh that's like such a bittersweet ending it's like happy but it's like so sad i'm done
Okay, so I think I'm gonna give this book 4.5 star or like 4 to 4.5 stars. In the beginning, I definitely had issues getting into the story just because the writing style is very different. And I was just like, wait, what? Did I just miss seven words? And I realized, no, I didn't. It's just written that way. Um, it did, however, get easier as soon as I hit chapter two. This book definitely felt like a father-son relationship story, but with like a distant father, if that makes sense. And obviously, Bod grows up and it's like a coming of age, I guess, type story of a kid. And I love how like ghosts, aka dead people, help him to become this amazing, kind, heartwarming human that he is in the end now. It definitely also felt like you grew up with Bod throughout the story because you wanted him to learn new things and you wanted to be there with him and support him throughout the things that he learned. So it was really nice. So it's still a very beautiful written story, but it sadly isn't a five star. So we still have to read another book. I don't even know what I should read now. I am not really feeling one for my enemy right now. So I guess the next book I'm going to be reading is Sadie by Courtney Summers. And I mean, she also does look like Sadie Sink on the cover. So it's a vibe. Yeah, it says on the back here, as I already said, that Sadie fled home after her little sister got brutally murdered by someone and is traveling now to Colorado to uncover what happened. At the same time, she actually becomes the subject of a podcast. It sounds so good. So yeah, book five, hoping this is going to be my final five star read. We're in Switzerland right now, yay! So don't mind that, also I look this tired just because I couldn't fall asleep last night. Let's read this amazing sounding book. Stop, I love how this is like written because I, I knew there was a podcast with like crime cases being solved or like retold, I knew that but I didn't know that it would be like interview style. It's such a nice and interesting way to make a book feel more elevated. Hey, so I just wanted to tell you all that if you're thinking about reading Sadie, that you should please, please check the trigger warnings of this book. This book tackles a lot of very, very dark and very realistic issues that happen a lot in this world that could be very triggering to you. So please check out the link in my description to the trigger warning list before reading this book. It's for your own safety. Does Sadie already know what happened? Oh my god, oh, he is such a creep. This is gonna be a hard read, I can already tell. Why are these people, like, so bad in this book? I don't understand. Oh my god, I'm, like, getting so mad. I'm, I'm like, losing my mind, everyone. This is... I have to breathe, I have to breathe, because what in the ever-loving heck is going on? Oh my god, and I just reached page 98! Um, this book is very dark. So far, this book is a 5 out of 5 stars. I'm extremely impressed by how this book is written. The switching between the podcast time period versus Sadie's present time period is amazing because we see everything through two different perspectives, but like two separate perspectives, two people who have no contact with each other at all. On top of that, Sadie is a very smart main character that is really good at expressing emotions. You can tell that, that Sadie is a very sad girl, but she's also a very observant girl because she sees so much and she notices everything. She notices all the small details. It's so realistic, I feel like. And I think that makes the book even more sad because these are like real issues that happen a lot. I do, really do wonder though how this book is going to end because I don't have any type of expectations right now for a happily ever after. And that's making me like really worried and really, really sad. Yeah, I'm gonna continue reading now the next 100 pages and then I'll give you an update again. I'm already a third done. Welcome back to book five, everyone. I just reached page 206 and I'm emotionally destroyed. You know how like people say a little life is like amazing and show stopping, but it's just so painful to read. That's what I feel like Sadie is like right now for me. And the fact that this is dual narrative adds so much to the book because from Sadie, we get the insights, we get the emotions, we get the layers, but then we see the podcast and we see Wes who only sees what people want him to see. And it's very interesting to see then how both of them see the world very differently and the situation. So let's read the last one her pages. Okay, okay, okay. Oh my god, is this like the- I, this feels like the last page. I don't think I'm ready for that. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, I'm done. Um, this book is definitely my five-star read of this video. Let me collect my thoughts and then come back.
I think the book tackles in a very heartbreaking and sad way how Sadie goes on this journey and goes from town to town to hunt down the guy who killed her younger sister. You feel for Sadie because she deals with so many things at the same time and she's still, she's still such a, she's still a kid, she's still a teenager. And I think that the podcast added so much to the book because of that because the podcast is obviously about Sadie and her sister's death and her disappearance. And we find out then even more about Sadie through other people's eyes. I also think that the obstacles that Sadie went through really elevated the story as well. Not in the sense that it was like so good that she went through these obstacles, but just to furthermore push the message of this book of Sadie being by herself on a journey to avenge her sister. And at the core stage is a book about what you will do for the people that you love. This book will now be staying in my brain for the next couple of months, maybe even. There were so many things that you have to think about now and after the book ended, especially because of the ending. Even though the book is very, very sad, I'm very happy that I finally found my next five star read. So yeah, thank you all so much for watching today's reading vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, even a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of my content and other reading vlogs, you can subscribe. Um, definitely tell me if you have read any of these books and if you have read Sadie, 100% let me know what your thoughts are about this book because I need to talk with someone about it. I hope you all have a great day, evening, night, time, morning, whatever time going in. I hope you're enjoying yourself. Go read a book! Please only read this if you have read the trigger warnings and think that you are able to read it. But I do think you can also read the other books I read in this video. Mostly she gets the girl and the naturals. Thank you again so much for watching today's video. Have a great day! Happy reading and see you next time.